what the CDC is saying is there's a likely we're going to see a spike in these air cases because of all the buildings all over the country that have allowed stagnation in their water systems over the time, over the period of the shutdown. And this is going to include dental loss. What, uh, what precautions should we take regarding uh, our premise plumbing and why if we're going back to reopen a building that has been sitting dormant for a while? Okay. Well, I got a lot of opinions about reopening, but I'll, uh, I'll keep most of them uh, kind of close hold right now. But that said, uh, there's a lot of things we have to consider when we go back to reopening. We have to, first of all, make sure we've got a safe workplace as safe as it can be. And I, I don't know how safe that is, to be honest. So water, that's a big deal in dentistry. We already know because we've had these, in just in the last couple of years, these made two big outbreaks, at least 100 kids infected with mycobacterium abscessus in the dental office. Thank God, no fatalities. There could have been, but there weren't any. But significant sickness, hospitalization, long-term consequences for many of these children. My goal today is not to go into that in detail, but. What we're saying is water is important. Water in America, even though we have safe drinking water supplies for the most part, and some of the safest water, frankly, in the world, water still makes people sick. Every year, thousands and thousands of Americans are sickened by water. They're sickened by the water they drink, and they're sickened by the water that they breathe in the form of aerosol. And one of the major culprits in the water that we breathe that makes us sick is Legionnaire's disease. And since 2000, the number of reported cases of Legionnaire's disease in America has gone up ninefold, a ninefold increase. Now, we don't know, again, there's another known unknown. Is this because we have more Legionnaire's disease? Is this because we're reporting it more accurately? We're having more cases reported when a lot of them formerly went unreported? Uh, you know, is it a change in how we're managing water in our municipal system? We don't know the answer but it's there. And so as these, as the shutdown came, buildings were shut down, maintenance dropped, nobody was there, nobody was running the water. And now we have accumulation, it's, this, is, this is inevitable, that we're gonna have accumulations of biofilm. Now the thing about Legionnaire's bacteria is they don't just grow in the biofilm like a Pseudomonas or a Klebsiella does, it's just part of the matrix. They're actually parasites of amoeba. So you typically don't get large amounts of Legionnaire bacteria in biofilms until they're pretty well established. And they go from being, you know, uh, just the first layer of bacteria as they grow, then other kinds of organisms like protozoa, which amoeba, for example, uh, then participate in the biofilm. And that's when we start getting high levels of Legionnaires. So what the CDC is saying is there's a likely we're gonna see a spike in Legionnaire cases because of all the buildings all over the country that have allowed stagnation in their water systems over the time, over the period of the shutdown. And this is going to include dental loss. So, but, and it's twofold. It's gonna be in the premise plumbing itself. So that means all of your faucets, all the places you wash your hands. If you have a shower, and some offices do, if you have a shower, your shower heads are gonna be coated with biofilm. If you have those aerators on your faucets, which I don't, by the way, recommend, we take them off if you're going to use them, you've got to clean them regularly. They're going to be coated in biofilm. And some of those generate a little bit of spatter there. So the risk of, of Legionnaires is real and depends on, on where you are. And there have been Legionnaires cases reported in dental offices, some anecdotally, some in phone for case reports, and at least two fatalities. And a dental school in the Netherlands, they haven't reported the case yet, recently had a Legionnaires uh, uh, case in their uh, dental school. Uh, but they haven't, I don't know if there'll be a case reported, it was reported to be anecdotal. But it wasn't a fatality. But this is all going on, so it's real. So what do you do? Well, the CDC has put out some pretty good guidance on it. I encourage you to go to the, pretty easy to, to search on Google or whatever you use. You just put in CDC, Legionnaires, COVID-19, those three things will pop right up. And I don't have the link right in front of me to give you the, the actual link, but. I th we'll probably make it available on our website too. Okay. So here's the main thing. So the first thing they recommend, start, let's start with your premise plumbing. Let's deal with that first. It's the easiest. They recommend that you take all your faucets. You can do them all at once or do them in sequential. This should be all of your faucets, including any shower heads. By the way, I would, if you have, you know, I don't, I think flush toilets are probably not the worst thing because of the tank and all. 
you might want to run those, but run everything. And what they recommend you do is you run the lines until it reaches the maximum level of hot water. And then you're probably there. Second thing is have a technician come in and if you have a tank water heater, water heaters that have been sitting sometimes are great reservoirs for Legionella to grow in. You want to make sure your, your, your uh, water heater is properly maintained. And also that the water temperature is right. They're recommending 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, uh, Legionella loves hot water and up to 108 degrees, it's ideal for its growth. So you often find the Legionnaires in, uh, contamination is greater in the hot water lines than the cold water lines. So its ideal range for growth is between 77 and 108 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, the, now- the CDC, guidelines does, the CDC guidelines mentions uh, running the water until it's really hot mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah, that's the thing. And that's what you want to do. And what you're doing, you're doing two things. You're, physically flushing the lines. Now we know that that doesn't remove attached biofilm. It'll remove the top layer or anything that's suspended in it and gets cleaner water in the system. Secondly, you're drawing in fresh municipal water, which has a chlorine, which should have a chlorine residual, whether it's chlorine or chloramine, which will help uh, attenuate the risk. It'll help to uh, some degree, to, it, won't, it won't kill the biofilm. It won't get rid of it entirely but it'll, it'll diminish its uh, potential for causing infection.